When a powerful tornado tore through parts of the American state of Oklahoma in May 2013, it caused an estimated $2 billion worth of damage. Communities were ripped apart, whole neighborhoods were leveled, and survivors were left with nothing but what they could salvage from the wreckage of their homes. Well, um, we were in Texas seeing our great-granddaughter, and our neighbors used our uh, shelter. They called us for permission to get in it and we told them just get in it <laughs> and uh, then they called us and told us that our house was gone and theirs was gone. It was a shock because um, everything in it was what we had. Many were quick to offer assistance especially in Moore, Oklahoma's seventh largest city. But those living in the rural parts of the state were unable to take full advantage of this support and found themselves left with little in terms of shelter. But what our team found was, as you get away from the city, some of the more affected regions are quite rural. In rural communities, it's hard to provide assistance, it's hard to find some of the families because they live on 10-acre tracks. As we were driving around and assessing some of the areas and speaking with the families and speaking with community leaders, where a number of families are living out of their cars, cars that were damaged as a result of the tornadoes. When they get inside their car at night, they put a tarp over the top of it uh, to, keep, to keep the wind and rain out. Uh, other families are living in consumer-grade tents. These tents just are not safe. Uh, the winds here in Oklahoma are quite severe. Uh, so severe, in fact, uh, that they can gust at 40, 40 miles per hour plus on a regular basis. So families are living in broken tents because that's all that they have. Look how it's bowing in this wind. Turn right back around. What's left of the home, the cars, and then they have the shelter box standing tall and strong. Survivors of the tornado have shown an admirable attitude. The Bree loves in particular have experience of coping with this type of situation. Uh, we suffered a total loss in 2006 with a wildfire. We started all over again uh, then. It means a lot that other people care. I think people in general want to help people and be there for each other. Uh, our neighbors um, across the way, we never talk to them very much. But right now, we are so very close. So we'll be taking care of each other. Even when developed countries are hit, and there is seemingly overwhelming support for disaster survivors, there can still be a need for Shelterbox to provide its experience and aid to support those worst affected communities. We have two children and so we have to keep on going <laughs> because that's what we've always taught them. You fall down, you get up, brush it off and go again. So uh, that's what we're doing. When our donors give to Shelterbox, they support an organization that will be there for families that are in need of comfort and dignity after disaster, no matter where they are in the world.